All right, so go ahead and drag this undo slider back to where we are back to our sphere. And let's talk about a few more options. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit this accept button. And it's going to drop us with a sphere. And we have a sphere sitting here because all we did was hit accept. So it's going to assume you want to keep this sphere and just start making changes to it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to swing around this way. I'm going to go to primitive type 2 and drag this outer one all the way in so we have a cylinder here. And I'm going to change the axis so it's pointing straight up. I'm going to use the scale so I can move this into place here. Now we still have this set to new surface at zero, so it is projecting through our sphere here. So let's go ahead and talk about symmetry. One thing we can do is we can come over here and we have, we can see we have three axes of symmetry here. You have Y, Z, and X, and of course, you know, Z is Z forward, Y, Y is up, and then X is across this way, you know, activating X symmetry. So if we go ahead and say, for example, turn on X symmetry, you're going to see didn't really change anything. We still have a cylinder up here. However, if I move this cylinder over to the left, it's going to split into two cylinders because we have X symmetry turned on. So I'm going to go ahead and scale these non-uniformly. I'll push these down. So now we have symmetrical cylinders across the X axis. And if we do this again in the Z, it's going to look like nothing changed. However, of course, if we move in the Z axis, it's going to split off into two primitives like this. So let's go ahead and push these all the way through as so we have top and bottom. Or even better yet, let's go ahead and turn on Y symmetry. So now it's going to be symmetrical on all sides. At this point, I can hit accept. And of course, we still have these same objects here. So I can go ahead and pull these up, scale them in. And if we go ahead and break it across that midpoint, now we're going to cut into these objects. Change the tessellation if you want, change the blending mode if you want. I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to turn off polyframe. That's a pretty interesting shape. So I'm going to go ahead and hit accept one more time. And you can see how easy it is to go ahead and use X, Y, and Z symmetry to your advantage. Now you're also going to see radial symmetry over here. So let's go ahead and we've hit accept. Let's do a full reset of the object. So we just go back to the original sphere here. And now what I'm going to do, instead of X, Y, and Z symmetry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this radial symmetry. And as we drag this up, it's going to give me a radial count. So if I pull this over to the left here, you're going to see we have a sphere going, uh, projecting out of our object here. And we have our radial symmetry set to 6. So that's a 6 count. Now it's not doing anything because we have to tell it what axis of symmetry we want it to follow. So with our radial symmetry, let's set this to like 12. And the first thing I'm going to try is going up here to the Y symmetry. So if I crank up this Y symmetry all the way to 1, you're going to see now we have radial symmetry all the way around the object. And as we crank this white slider up and down, it's going to symmetrically place all of those new projected objects around the circumference of this sphere out here. So if I, again, I set it to 12, we now have 12 equally spaced objects all across this kind of weirdo sphere shape we have. Now what we can also do, let's like say, let's say we wanted to put screws in here. So we already have screw ports on the top and the bottom, but I want to make these screw ports along the sides as well. So what I can do is I can zoom in here and you're going to see we have these little white dots, these are clipping dots. So we can actually go through here and we can just push back and we can use these as flattening planes all the way back in. And if we go from top to bottom, you can actually flatten them out this way. Now you're going to see I'm pulling this top one down and then I can pull this bottom one up as well. If you want to move both of those at the same time, hold down shift and then grab these and you can smash them from both sides, top and bottom at the same time, or even from this axis here, you can go left and right. And you won't be able to see it, but you can also go inside and outside. Now an alternative to this is you could actually hit accept and then pull these shapes out. And let's go ahead and change this shape here, primitive type one to a rectangle. And then as we pull this out, let's go ahead and change this to a new surface temporarily. So you're gonna see we have a rectangle sitting here. And as we push this rectangle in, we can use it as a clipping plane. So if I set this to new surface of zero, you're gonna see it's gonna start smashing in this side. And it looks like we also have to change that blend down to zero. So it's a nice sharp clip right there. So we can actually use this to push that square. And you can see the bounding box for that square right here and clip it that way. Or like I mentioned before, you can use these clipping dots to flatten those surfaces out. So once these are flattened how you like, let's go ahead and hit accept. And just to see the shape that I'm working on, because it'll take you a little bit to memorize them. I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to say new surface temporarily. I'm going to change this back to 0.5. I'm going to change my primitive type to primitive type 3. Change my new surface back down to 0 so it's projected. I'm going to scale this down. Push it in. And now we can push in that 
cylindrical shape that we made. If we're happy with that, we can go to our gear, we can say accept, and now we have a nice hard surface complex shape that we're free to do whatever we want with. In fact, if we want to say hit X to go across X symmetry, let's take our transform menu and drag it over here. So if I go into my, say, my standard brush mode, I can turn on Sculptress. I can have X symmetry on, I can have X and Z symmetry on. If you're having a hard time remembering what axis you're on, turn on your floor. You're gonna see Y is up, so we're sitting on the floor here. Z is forward, X is on the side, so we have X and Z turned on. You can go through here and you can soften the transition between these shapes right here. And if you wanted to do that all at the same time, you could turn on X, Y, and Z. And now both sides, we can soften those transitions using that Sculptures Pro functionality that we talked about earlier. If you want to drop screws in here or anything uh, from our Insert Mesh Brush Library, you can go to BI Brush Insert. That narrows it down to these objects here. Let's go into our Model Toolkit. You can go up here to look for something you want, or you can also hit the M key and choose from this. So since we have X, Y, and Z still turned on in our Transform menu, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the floor. We can drop any shape we want to in here. And then if we hit W, we can swap these out as we select through here. Let's say we like this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and scale this up. And you're gonna see as we scale these, it's gonna go towards the middle of the world and then away from the center. Go ahead and turn on L Sim, that'll turn on local symmetry. And now these objects will stay locally symmetrical to themselves. We'll go ahead and place those right in there. And let's go over here to our subtool split. We'll do split mask points. And with these, object selected here, I can hit D for dynamic subdivision, say always yes, and that'll go ahead and smooth those out. Of course, that's gonna be turning on our geometry, dynamic subdiv, shift D, and D turns that on and off. And then around the middle here, we're gonna activate symmetry again across the Y, radial count up to 12, which is how many pieces we put across here. I'm gonna to go to BI, brush insert industrial parts, hit M, let's go ahead and grab a Phillips type screw head, and we'll just drop those right in the middle there position them, scale them however you want, and one more time, we'll go ahead and do a split mass points here. And now you can see we have a very complex shape that we were able to create in a very short period of time using Sculptures Pro to soften these transitions out, using Project Primitive to get this complex shape, and then using Insert Mesh Brushes to kind of finish out with these details here.